on my tummy. <laughs> so what do you think if we get the skeleton? Ah. <clears throat> Oh, the elastic would be great. Thanks, Jen. So what are the things that you think make it comfortable to be on your belly? Or don't make it comfortable, whichever way you want to go. So something about your chest not being adaptable, yeah, would be the word I'd like to use rather than tense. <laughs> And why would that make it uncomfortable? Because it doesn't make it uncomfortable in other positions. <laughs> yeah, again, so part of it might be breathing, that you're not, it's difficult for you to find a place to put your head. Yeah. Yeah, so this is one thing. Mm -hmm. What else might make it uncomfortable? Or comfortable, doesn't matter. If some parts are taking way too much weight, yeah? So if there's, and that's in any position, isn't it? If there are some parts that are really pressing hard into the floor, it's not going to be that comfortable for us in a position. Mm -hmm. So maybe people who like extending find it a little bit more comfortable to be on their stomach than people who like to be more flexed. So that would make you feel more uncomfortable when... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's something about maybe not knowing that backspace as clearly for you as, as knowing that you inhabit this, this is more available for you. What other things? No size. <laughs> and breast size, that's a big one. Not always, you know, there's many people who've got huge breasts who can be very comfortable on their bellies, but it can be, for some people, a real issue. What's an optimal spine? What's a well-organised spine? <laughs> Good try, Alastair. Good try. But what would we be looking at? That's, this is what's really interesting. You know, we throw out these things. Uh, but what does it mean? What do we actually mean by that? Mm -hmm. So if we had a more even distribution of work through our system, so not just our spine, but that there was a more even distribution. Oh. Anything else? Mm. So what if we make a bit of a leap here, what might we expect to see in Do Doris in standing that might tell us she might not be that comfortable lying on her belly? Do you want to stand up, Doris? What would you expect if someone wouldn't be that comfortable? Where would your weight be on your feet? Where's yours, Doris? Heels. Mm -hmm. 
So we already know from her standing that she doesn't have an even distribution of weight in her base of support. No? So even her standing's telling us this, that there's, there's one part of me that's pushing much more into the floor than other parts of me. No? So does that translate? This is the question I'm asking you. This is, these are the things I'm looking for. Does that ability that she doesn't know how to distribute her weight in standing tell us something about how she knows to, how to distribute her weight in other positions? You know, how do we start to look for some of these correlations or relationships? Hmm? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so just see if you find a little bit more of your feet in standing. Doris, and just shift your weight a little bit so you've got more of your feet. And what lets go when you get a little bit more weight on more of your feet? Something in the legs? What else might it be? What happens in your breathing? And then go back to your heels again. And what's happened in your low belly and in your chest? <sighs> hmm? Hmm? Mm. And can you see what happens in the rest of her that is doing that? Huh? Her belly just completely... So when she's back here, all of this is really... She's tight here, she's tight here. Huh? So if she was in that position lying on her tummy, she's not going to have a lot of give through here. So just let that... Now go and lie on your tummy and see, does that feel any different? Because this is where we're trying to find out what our habits are. So if you just think of your belly being a little bit longer, how's that feel, Doris? Yeah. <laughs> Because she hasn't made them up into that transition to standing yet, has she? Because no? up in standing, she's still supporting herself by doing work she doesn't need. So we'll just, just have a... No, stay there just for a second, Doris, and feel that breathing down into your belly again. Yeah? And you can see her back can breathe now. And now turn your head, Doris, and see there's the tightness again. There's the pattern of her belly tightening. So how could you keep the breath? Ah. Mm -hmm. Because now she's becoming aware of her habits, of what is it that she does that she doesn't know she's doing. Absolutely. You can see that. And this is what we're going to be exploring. And I know Jeff talked to you a lot about using the ground, elastic forces. So what we see as soon as someone pushes, and what I mean by pushes is they're stuck to the ground and they can't move, is everything gets heavy. Whereas I'm, I can press into the ground, but the press, when I'm using my skeleton, gives me movement. And do it again. And there's the press, yeah? And so you'll see this over and over again when you start to look for it, that... That she does, so her anti gravity response could still be much more um, clear to her. Hmm? Now come up to standing, Doris, and feel, yeah, she doesn't push. <laughs> and 
keep coming up. And because she hasn't pushed, where's the weight on your feet now, Doris? Hmm. Hmm. But that's not biomechanical. Do you know what I mean? That's not just about showing her that her foot is connected to her, knee is connected to her, hip is connected. This is showing her a fundamental anti-gravity response. What does she do when gravity isn't her friend? <clears throat> so now, thank you, Doris, if we go to the skeleton, and we're talking ideal now, which is not what most of us are. If someone had their head to the right, where would you expect their weight to be? Have I got him going to the right here? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what we would expect on the belly uh, is if someone turns their head to the right, the weight's going to shift to the left. And you could probably see from looking at a lot of you this morning, that's not the case. No, many of you counter-rotate. I know I'm, I still can do that. But we'll have this side of the pelvis down as we're turning to the right. Yeah? That can have a lot to do with which eye we're used to using, what's been happening. So that what I'm looking for is that if my head is oriented to the right, so if that's my orientation, then everything should be able to follow where my head is going. Okay, so what that's the skeleton, and you could feel he could be a little bit more. So you can see both his heels are fine. We're going to look at the skeleton first. <laughs> okay, it's easier to see on the skeleton. So, what could we maybe? You can see everything is ready. These are ready to turn to the this way to help his head to be more comfortable. This one not so much. This is really ready, but this knee's a bit stuck. Huh? This might have something to do with his hip. Pelvis is really ready to roll. This hip isn't. Huh? on the skeleton. This is ready to roll. This is ready to roll. And you can see his shoulders. And look what happens. He's a beautiful example, this guy. If I'm going to roll, where does this shoulder go? It goes up. Huh? <laughs> the shoulder goes up to give room to get longer on this side. Because normally, where we've got the weight tends to be longer have more contact with the ground. Huh? So that even if he had his arm down here, which is often a position we'll use, that that is going to be helping this shoulder to go up, not to be down there. Can you see that wouldn't on the skeleton? If I did that, now that's going to get in the way of his ribs being able to roll. Yeah, this isn't as free now because we're not getting all of this yeah, length through the system because he's constantly now got somewhere to roll to. Whereas as soon as if I do that, which means these muscles are holding him down, those ribs can't roll. So remember, what allows all of this to move is that the big muscles aren't doing the work. The big muscles aren't holding all these bits together. So it's, and you've been doing a lot of this, so if I can get this light and this light, if I know this is light and this is light and this is light and this is light, then probably the head will be light. Because it can only be heavy if the big muscles are holding it there. Huh? So this lightness 
that I know Jeff started to talk about last time is paramount to tell us about organisation. This ability to lift ourselves away from the ground yeah, rather than having to, to push on the ground. Push is a way to get to lift. Yeah, so sometimes we need push to start to, to get things going, but where we're heading ideally is that if I asked him to get up, he'd just come up. Okay, so now let's look at some people. Okay. Who knows that it isn't comfortable? Okay. Have a lie down. You can lie there, yeah. Because once we've got an idea about what we're looking for or what would be, then we can start to fit the individual into the into the pattern and not make them be that in any way, but just that we've got a, an idea about what we're heading to. So we look at Jane. So Jane likes to stay pretty symmetrical. <laughs> so Jane, just come up to standing for a second, sorry, because I want to see how easy it is for her to shift her weight to one leg or another. <laughs> huh? So if you're going to stand on one leg, uh, not. <laughs> yeah. So you can see it's pretty precarious. Mm. Mm. But more precarious on one. And again, watch what she has. How far does she have to move through space to do that? It's not that she's here and she just does this. Yeah, but it's uh, this and this. <laughs> huh? So we could sort of say, we know Jane still has to find out a lot about how she could stand on one leg. Where can we begin to really look at that lying on the belly? <laughs> yeah? So have a lie down again, Jane. So as I said, Jane, really like head in the middle. She'll even put something under her head to give us room to breathe. Yeah? So she doesn't have to shift this. So what you noticed in Jane is she has to shift this a long way. Yeah? This first rib. Yeah? And she, she stays pretty symmetrical. So her toes are pretty much in line with her heels. Huh? There's no real in and out of her feet. Her arms are pretty symmetrical. Yeah. And you could say, well, isn't this what we want? That as we <laughs> and the thing is, as we get more organised, yes, we will become a little bit more symmetrical. So what happens is as we get more organised, the weight doesn't have to shift as far. Okay. So Jane, does that feel more comfortable just by spreading your legs? Yes. And this is why often in prone, one of the first things we'll say to people is spread your legs. No? What did it let change? Jane? Mm -hmm. And what happened in your belly? So go in again and feel what did you? Yeah. Her lat low back is working. Yeah. <laughs> so her extensors, she, you know, she's really. So doing that gives her a little bit more width. Yeah. Jane knows about length, being tall. But does she know much about width? No. Okay. So this leg's really wide. This one. And just could you turn your head to the side now, Jane? Let's just see, does that make a difference? 
And very cleverly, did you see where she put her head? She didn't leave it in the centre. Did you see that? Yeah? And I think um, Jeff did that with you last, all the rolling of the head, yeah? That difference between rotating when you go down in the same place or rolling. Huh? Well, yeah, this moves to the side. So we've got her a little bit more comfortable, but you can really see that a lot still hasn't adapted to this position of earning, if you like. Both shoulders. So which shoulder would you expect to be a little, if you had your head to the left, which shoulder would be a little bit higher and which one might be lower in terms of the ground? So you'd sort of think maybe the left would be a bit higher mm -hmm. away from the ground and the left might be a little bit closer. Sorry, the right might be a little bit closer to the ground to go with turning my head this way. Whereas you can see Jane's kept that pretty much there and turned her head. So she hasn't really adapted a lot through this upper back to let her head be more comfortable. Watch how she's got around it is she's translated her head. Her pelvis, though, shifted a little bit. So go back to the middle again. And you can see that little... <laughs> and she's taken it even further to the left now. So let's just see what's happened. So she's here. So we're just going to see what's ready to go that way. And again, my weight's shifting a little bit as I do this. I'm not here and going. No? So this is not about when you've been doing all the push through the leg where you're staying really. This is across the ground we're doing here. Does that make, yeah? So does that move? Do these move a little bit? So I'm just going up and checking. Do her hips. Staying within what's really easy. And I can feel when I do her hips, this starts to push into the ground. No? Absolutely. I'm going to do her pelvis, yeah. So that, again, is something that this side here, I'm not trying to change it, I'm just feeling, but there she, she's getting pushed into the ground. And it's not me because I can still shift my weight. Right. What happens in her ribs? So I'm just informing her, really, at the moment, of what could be. So I'm not, I'm staying really within quality, what about if her ribs were to? And because I've got the big picture, you can see I'm not taking her straight across the ground. Hmm? Because I know for this turfy thing, this side's got to get a little bit longer. This side's got to get a little bit shorter. This shoulder's starting to go up a little bit. Hmm. Because she's on the ground. There's no way that those ribs can go into the ground. No? So we've got to move the weight across them. Do her shoulder blades, does she understand one would go, this is just the bottom. And can you feel, see how all of these are starting to influence the comfort in and what's happening in her neck? I can go to her shoulders. So now I'm shoulders rather than shoulder blades. I'm just seeing where that one would have to go. And this is really not clear for her. But because I'm staying within real ease, where does the shoulder have to go? It's not just lifting, is it? Shifting and down a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. 
So I can't just do this. That would be the same as doing it with the ribs. Does that make sense if I just did a pure rotation? So I'm bringing this shoulder, I'm turning this one a little bit. This one would turn down. So if I did it on the, this guy, except his arm, I'll just get up again. It would be this. So this is the same principle you've been using down there. So I could do shoulder blades where it's this one's going to go up this way and that way to get the turn. Does that, yep. Then the shoulder itself, this one's going to turn that way, but this one's going to turn toward the floor. Huh? So everything's sort of making sense. Huh? And because then I can come in once I've done that. That's why I got confused. James going the opposite way. I can come in on this wonderful area here and just go, James, this has to get longer, this side. This. So I'm gently pulling this long as I'm turning it. This side going down. I'm not trying to be incredibly skeletal here. Do you know what I mean? I'm not in here feeling for that force transmission that you were doing when you were pushing through the leg. This is, as I said, it's more just across the ground. It's, it's really light. Okay, Jane, now lift your head and turn. Yeah, <laughs> and go back again. Mm -hmm. That's a nice breath. Okay. And Phil, where's your weight now? See, And we'll just go back. I'm just going back to the part that was a little bit stuck because I haven't tried to change anything. No, I've just had a clarity about the direction that I'm looking for. And we just come back. Ah, her hips got free. Huh? <laughs> Okay, come up to standing now. She'd be quite happy, I think, lying on her belly now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it on this guy. It's the same thing. What I know what I'm looking for. So I know this side I want to get longer. Uh -huh. This side I want to get shorter. So I was in here and I'm literally just doing that. Because this has to come up a little bit, doesn't it? This has to get a little bit longer here to let that shoulder come up. It's, I'm not this. Yeah? I'm just gently on the tissue, pulling this up and showing that that can go down a little bit. This side up and this side can go down a little bit. Up. Hmm. But we can come around and help you with that. So do you want to give that a go? Mm -hmm. So first of all, you're just simply going to notice, is the person, so Jane was very symmetrical. So how about you start off, get a partner, and I'll talk you through it a little bit. And the first thing is just notice where the weight is on their feet in standing. Do you want tables for this? If you know you're better with a table, please get a table now. <laughs> if you know your self-use is compromised, working on the floor. Do whatever, you, do what you like, Sue. I think the re look, hang on, Sue's just asked a really good question because she said, but it's good to do it on the floor to have. If you know you are better organised at a table, your hands will be softer, you will feel more, you will be able to sense yourself more, you'll be able to sense more in them. 
That's the bottom line. So if you know that in, um, because this is something new, you haven't done this before, so you want your senses to be able, really make, able to make distinctions. So that's what I'd rather you decided it on. <laughs> where am I more comfortable? Where am I, where is it that I don't have to pay as much attention to myself? Because if I'm paying a lot of attention to myself, I can't pay a lot to them. And then come back to the floor as a bigger, as a level of challenge. Yeah. And we'll come around and help. But as I said, I'll talk you through it, talk you through the first bit. So. <laughs> You might then want to observe them shifting their weight a little bit, not going on one leg yet, but simply how do they shift their weight around the base of support, which is their feet? Does it look like they include all parts of their feet or just some parts more than others? And this is simply because we're going to come back at the end and see if this is different. And now, could you ask them to turn left and right and just see how much of them follows the head? How much of them follows the head? How well does their pelvis know their head? And what's that got to do with where they can transfer the weight on their feet? Their ability to shift their weight? And then if I ask you one more question, if someone was going to be more comfortable um, in prone, would you like to see them transfer the weight to the side they're turning or to transfer the weight to the opposite leg? If you were going to be comfortable in prone, If the person's going to be comfortable in prone, when they turn their head, what would make it easier? Would it be if they turned their weight and went in the direction that their head is going? Or if they shifted their weight back to the opposite leg? Okay, so now they can lie down and you're going to observe how they get comfortable. So they're going to lie where, however they're comfortable. And now that you know a little bit about what you'd expect to see in an ideal 
organization if you're going to have your head to the side? What are you seeing in the person, in your partner? Where's their weight? How do they have their arms? Are they a little bit, where do you see it? Are they longer on one side than the other? How do their shoulders compare? Their heels? Their pelvis? And then once you've observed it, you can begin down at the heels and gradually work your way through. Very gently, not trying to change anything, but simply by you having a clear idea of what would be easier, you're interested in what do they understand of that. And you're always thinking of the big picture. So that as soon as you put your hands on them, you've got all of them in your image and all of you in your image. So you're always taking them, them in the direction that's congruent with the organisation that you're looking for. Always taking them in the direction that's congruent. So you have to be really clear. So it's not seeing how mobile their heels are. But how are they organised to go in the direction that would make turning their head to this side easier. What do you think, Elizabeth? Where's, the, where's her weight got to shift to to make it turning that way easy? No, no, no. Where does her weight need to shift to to make turning her head to the left easy? What's turning to the left? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And I know you did a lot about self-use last time. And can you stay quite congruent so it's both heels, both knees, both hips, their whole pelvis, both sides of their ribs, both shoulder girdles, both shoulders. So try not to do just one side. Doris, see if you can really do two sides. So you're giving them information into their right and their left side. <laughs> and because this is about shifting their weight, you need to be shifting your weight just a little. So are you shifting your weight in the same direction that, that you're asking them to shift their weight in? Thank you. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're saying it's just that if you're doing both together, it's easier for you to get the whole pattern through, Doris? You want this to be taking more weight. Yeah, this is getting longer. This is getting shorter. Yeah. So if you're asking their ribs to move, your ribs must be ready to move. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, soften your intention by about seventy five percent. I want to go down and I want to go up with a little turning. This one to go down. 